Um, so for this unboxing, I have two books that I got at roughly the same time, and they were interesting to me because they were both about lakes and like something intriguing about houses by lakes. And so the first one is by P.J. Lynch, and um, I'm a huge fan of his. Um, and I met him like years ago at a Kennewick Press event for his uh, picture book about um, everyone related to the boy who fell off the Mayflower. Um, and then this other one is, and so his book is about a lake that's haunted. Um, and you can see here, you know, like submerged under the lake is like a whole village. Um, and then the second one is by Thomas Harding, illustrated by Britta Tekentrop, and it's The House by the Lake, and it's a story of a house and its history, and then I guess it's an old house, so four families who called it home. And so let's start with PJ Lynch's, and there's like something, you know, like eerie about it, isn't it? Like the color scheme and the detail that you see, and... And like right here, hidden away, like, like, they look like unhappy ghosts. So like, this is a lake, it's haunted, definitely creepy, could be Halloweenish, but there's something realistic about it too, that makes me think it's not like a Halloween story or like a haunted, scary story, but like something a little bit more sinister. And so this is a flooded village of Spezia. And they say that that lake is haunted, but Jacob and his father live on its shore and they catch fish to sell at the market. And um, there is something creepy about this lake and, um, and something in particular about the clock tower. And so it's a love story. It's kind of an epic, you know, it's almost like, you know, like, like a, like an epic, you know, you know, um, Les Miserables type musical, you know, like proportion, the story. And I, um, if anyone can capture that type of story in illustration and words, it would be PJ Lynch. So it is kind of this epic story. And here you see the clock tower, which is the only thing that, um, seems to be, um, emerging from this whole village that's submerged. And it might have, it might be because they built a dam. Yeah, there was a reservoir. And so, um, you know, the, they flooded it. Everyone got moved. But Jacob and his father, their house was on the hill, so they weren't relocated. And so here they are fishing. And, you know, all their neighbors gone. And, um, yeah, so this is, you know, a story of... Um, Oh God, look how beautiful. He has such great illustrations. So this is a love story. Um, but then there's a twist because there's sort of this haunted aspect. Um, you know, somehow they have some kind of um, pull on the couple. Um, and there's a whole, I mean, there's a whole like, uh, you know, life apparently of the ghosts that live you know in the village but you know but in reality the store i mean like the people in the actual village got relocated so it's not like they all perished from the flooding but you know but that's sort of like the creepy element and um anyway it looks like it just looks like an epic you know a little bit scary like like a classic like a real classic um, you know, fairy tale almost, you know, so that, that looks like it would pair well with this book, The House by the Lake, which also has some sort of creepy elements. Like you see, you know, you see this house and it looks, it doesn't look scary, but then you see the people leaving and they're all like, you know, in a silhouette and they don't give off like a happy vibe. And then you see these planes overhead and like, you know, something's, you know, something's like sinister is happening, you know, something like not good. Like this is not, this is not a good situation for that family. And so, um, this is the outskirts of Berlin. Oh, wow. So this is a, 
this could be like a Holocaust story. And the, the family um, who owns it is a Jewish doctor um, and his family. And then the next, the next um, inhabitants of the house is a Nazi composer. And then um, wartime refugees and then a secret police informant. Oh, that's awful. Um, so this house now um, is owned by the great grandson of the original doctor who lived there. And um, it, it's, it's like a, it sounds like a true story, um, a haunting fairy tale, but I don't know. It isn't like, it definitely has some bad, you know, villains in it. And um, yeah, but it's true. So the house here is so happy, and here's the kind family, and wow, I really do like these illustrations. They're, there's something like they give you like, um, like a real sense of who they are, but there's also something ephemeral about it, you know, because it's like, like a faded photograph or, you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's solid, but that it's also sort of, um, uh, transient, you know? So, I mean, I like that. It like it really does match the story, um, this illustration to give it, you know, to get you know it it gives it the the people, but then it also indicates like it's you know the impermanence of the inhabitants and that they're not necessarily here with us, and here is where, you know, the family had to leave. So I don't know, like they left, but like you don't, we don't know that they end up in what happened to them. We, we don't know. All we know is they got, you know, it was like a, you know, they were forced to leave and then there's a new family and they also have that, you know, we can see them, but then they're also a little bit, you know, um, ghost-like or impermanent and so and then there's sort of a foreboding now it goes from like happy colors to kind of a much darker um color palette and then the words match it you know and yeah like this is not a great time i mean the illustrations are can really um tell the story as well and here um, the house was abandoned the couple left it's empty for a long time and then there's another family who fixes the house up and um, I mean I don't know I mean like it's like interesting like this person who fixes the house up are they the wartime refugees or is it the secret police informant? Like it's what a weird um, mental grappling of like the person who made this family home beautiful again was like kind of this like terrible person. So I don't I don't know actually if that if that is who it is. Like maybe those were the refugees. I don't know. Um, and anyway, more you know more time keeps going by. Um, and then eventually the house slides into disrepair and then somebody takes over and so the final person to restore the house um, is the great great grandson of the doctor and so the good news is that you know that family, somebody survived, um, and the house is restored, which is, you know, it's a, it's sort of a bittersweet story. So the young man, and then the man with the fluffy hat, he, was he the one who restored it? Um, but he's the informant. And then the husband and wife from Berlin, um, 
were they the composers? And then here's the, no, this is the composers, the second family. Wow. And so a house is a house. But um, the inhabitants tell the story.